Well, about the musical life in Vienna then consisted, I suppose, of the opera where Mahler was conducting and the Philharmonic concerts where they had various conductors, I believe. The days of Mahler being director of the opera were for us really a revelation mm. because uh, he had, when he conducted, every performance was perfection. Mm. And in a natural way, you know, he yes, effaced himself uh, completely. One never talked of Mahler. It was even forbidden in these days that the name of the conductor was on the bill. Oh, how extraordinary. Because one waited, who will conduct tonight? And everybody was happy when this small figure came in and, and he rushed to the desk and without a moment of hesitation started conducting. You mean to say one could have gone into the Vienna Opera in those days not knowing who was going to be the conductor for that evening? Yes, yes. Oh, as long as Mahler was there, one, it was never known. Was this a, a principle of his? Yes. Well, I always thought he must have been a very flamboyant sort of conductor, throwing himself about in terrific frenzy, as it were. Is this not true, then? Only in the rehearsals. Ah. You know, it was very interesting to see um, when he conducted his, uh, one of his own works, or, uh, as went very often to rehearsals, um, that at the rehearsal one thought he was quite wild and, and um, overdoing it. Mm. At the performance itself, Hardly any movement of the left hand, only the, uh, the baton in the right, a short stick, and the same in the opera. He, of course, when he needed something uh, from the stage, you see that the singer mm. should give more than mm. he did, well, then he was persuading. I in see, yes. But in general, he conducted then our performance is rather like, say, Strauss or Weingartner with small movements of the it's stick with the right yes, hand. Yes, yes, Oh, how extraordinary. Yes. Particularly in the later years. He may have been different when he was very young, but when he came to Vienna, he restrained his movements to the minimum. I see. Did you hear any of his big opera performances, uh, Tristan or anything all, like that? Yes, you all the first performances. Yes. Uh, is it true that he uh, played fast and loose with the tempo, as it were? You know, that the tempo changed all the time from bar to bar according to the expression. Would you say this was true? I've read it, I think. No, no. No, he stuck to, uh, I think, uh, in an incredible uh, way, to the idea of the composer. Mm -hmm. No, um, you know, uh, you could say it of even of Strauss, mm -hmm. that he interpreted, let's say, the classics in such a way. But Mahler was... Uh, more classical than, than all, all people would have thought of him. The mm. opposite of a romantic composer. Extraordinary. Do you mean to say that if we'd hear now a record, if it could have been made, of Mahler yes, conducting yes. a Mozart symphony, yes. in the matter of tempo, it wouldn't differ in the way the tempo was kept yes, moving yes. from the, what do we say, the normal performance Let's of today? Let's say from Bruno Walter. From Bruno Walter. No. Uh -huh, I would say, Bruno Walter is, so to say, a replica of Mahler, mm. only Mahler had more force in his rhythm. Mm. Mm. You know, was that the special secret, do you think, the force in the rhythm? Really? Yes, yes, mm. yes. He had the rhythm of Toscanini, mm. and he had, uh, I would say, the heart of Bruno Weiter. Tell me, was Mahler... Um, Interested in Schoenberg and his group, or did he help to forward their compositions at all? I think in the beginning he was not at all interested. It, his interest was evoked through his wife, mm. uh, who was a pupil of Zemlinsky, yes. and knew more about uh, this movement. And then, from the moment when he got interested, he was really a promoter of... Uh, the whole uh, group and the movement and took a deep interest in it. There's a question I always wanted to ask you and that is um, in Mahler's Sixth and Seventh Symphonies you find these piling up of fourths which yes. uh, later you find in Schoenberg's Chamber Symphony well only a year later but uh, it seems as though that might have influenced Schoenberg but in Mahler's Ninth, the opening for example I seem to suspect Despite the fact that it's in D major, I can hear the influence of Schoenberg's school on the orchestration. Uh, did inf do you think it's true to say that Mahler was, to a certain extent in his later works, slight extent influenced by the kind of music Schoenberg was writing? 
I really don't think so. I think it is his inner development which forced him to abandon uh, more and more, let's say, the remnants of the basso continuo mm. horn chords, which we have yes, in quite. Beethoven and mm. in his first symphonies, and which he tried in the revisions of his symphonies mm. uh, to cut out. You know, mm. I have a revision of the Fifth Symphony, mm. and uh, it is astonishing how much of middle parts are removed in the last edition. And mm. that is as these chambers music sound uh, of the Ninth Symphony, I think, derives from this, his own development. Removing the blocking of...